blessings, peace, and love to everybody that clicked whatever you had to click to land here. If you don't know where you are, you are now tuned into Keith's Corner. Big facts. Yeah. Cool. Episode number one. The, the first episode. I want to introduce my guest. He's a good friend of mine. A, an awesome painter. Ooh. But I'll let you I'll let you describe, you know, because it's like how how would you describe yourself to people if you had to uh I use my bio. I'm a You just already have a pre written? <laughs> Dead ass. Like my bio on like social media is that I'm a visual creator via the creator. So I feel like that's the best summary of my How entity. long did it take you to like figure out that concise bio? Probably till like last year, all my life till last year. Cause like, yeah, like people have different streams of creating. And yeah. like you said, I'm a painter amongst others. So Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to like just be like, oh, you're just a painter. Cause right. that kind of puts you in a box too, right? Exactly. That's where visual creator comes in. But I still think that visual adjective might be a visual creator, you know, that might be like some more limitations, but it's still, still broad enough to encompass all that is my primary means of expressing, you know, yeah. like the painting, the graphics, the photography, the drawing, the, you know, the gun of vision, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, <laughs> AKA hey. Dante, hey. AKA and the poetic Gunna, yeah. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I want to thank you for even being here. Like, I know I, I reached out to you, like, pretty late. No doubt. And it's a side side. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted you to be on the first episode. Bless, bless. But, man, you haven't, like, actually been here yet, right? Like To this crib? To this crib yeah, since yeah. I moved here. I've never been to Keith's Corner. <laughs> this is my That's kind of on time. me. I never had a housewarming par- party. Hmm. Like, a proper, like, True. When did gathering. you move here? Like, how long? Um, Like, May... Of 2016. No, not 2016. What am I saying? Last year. Really? Yeah. So you... I've been here for a couple months. Wow. I actually this is thought it. you were still like pulling from Scarborough. From Scarborough? Like, nah. you know, <laughs> like back in the day. Okay, but, that's dope. you know, like, it's just like, I just needed that. I mean, I'm sure you could relate to that. Yeah, too. You just need that environment where... Because I was done. I felt stagnant in mm. that environment. I just had right. like to switch it up Change a little bit. Yeah, that's always helpful. The vibes, the vibes are there, but the acoustics suck. Mm. Even with all the soundproofing, how do you prefer this? Like, how do I what? Prefer this space to? It's awesome. Right. Like we get we get like people coming over and like recording music and stuff. Ooh, so now it's like math functional. You can actually yeah. do both. Like I wake up, I, c- I wake up from my bed and then I can just walk straight to my computer, and just work on something, Yo. and then and then because I work and then like during the day and then mm. when I come home. Because before my commute would be like an hour, and then that's right. like yeah, I'm tired by the time I'm home, and then yeah. yeah. But I mean, it it suffices. Like it's not perfect, but right. at this point, man, I feel like at this point I'm just done seeking perfection like right. that. I don't care if there's like, you know, little flaws in Quartz, the uh, yeah. in the recordings and whatnot. But I, I mean, mean, you had a studio. You still have. That, I had probably, right? yeah, yeah. Like so, you had to always physically go to the studio now you literally just wake up and yeah do the shit and the studio like that was like different because i didn't set that up so i'm not mm. really sure like where the wires is like even like when I, whenever i ha- do have a recording there sometimes it doesn't even work and then right. i have to like figure out what's not yeah, working like there's always something going right. wrong with that stuff so um Shout out to Keith's Corner where you can do everything you, you want. You can do, do everything, man. It's yeah. just like a creative space. Right. But that's what I, I wanted to create, like an atmosphere where, especially for this podcast, like mm-hmm. I wanted it to be like just a space where, you know, we could, like individuals could share knowledge and exchange ideas right. and thoughts and just kind of like have an open discussion about it's random like, stuff. There's no real agenda. It's not like an interview or anything yeah, like that. I feel that. You feel know that. what I mean? The way, you know, it's so funny, like the first time I met you, um, I knew you were an artist. It's right, actually funny. Really? Like I never, it's not even, a, it's not even like a story that was like a big deal or anything, but um, I don't know if you remember this, but I forgot what 
the occasion was, but Esquire was coming to pick me up from my place and mm-hmm. we were going to his crib. I right. think this was back when he lived in like Barry or something. Barry. Yeah. Was it the Eastern Promises listening? It might have been. It might have been that listening or was party. It prior to that, I think it was. Probably I don't remember. The listening party. It was prior to that. Prior to that. It was yeah. Some something was going on, and then um, he was down to pick me up and then drive me there with him. Yeah. And then when he came over, you were there with him, like you were in the car, yeah. and that was the first time I met you. Um, so. So he's driving, you're in the passenger seat, and I'm in the back seat, right? Yeah. And we're like cruising on the highway. And, you know, he was just playing music and whatnot. Um, and I was just kind of like vibing out in the back seat, mm-hmm. just like looking out the window and stuff like that. Um, and then you're like, <laughs> you're out, like, I didn't want to pry into it, but mm-hmm. you, like you're in my vision, right? So you're on your phone. And you were like editing a photo or something. Do you remember this? Or is this like, it's like the you're, randomest I, I memory. I vaguely remember this. <laughs> like you're, actually. You're, so you're editing a photo. And um, I was like, okay, like what is he doing? <laughs> like this is kind of cool. Like I want to see what he's actually doing. And literally all you're doing was you're moving the photo like a millimeter to the left. That's so BSC. And, and then, shit. yeah. And then like, you're like, nah, you thought about it. You looked at it for like five <laughs> seconds and then you moved it a millimeter back and you're just like making these, it wasn't even drastic yeah, like changes. minor just like, adjustments. Just like little, little things. And I was like, yeah. yo, you know what? This guy's an artist. <laughs> that's definitely an artist. Yeah, that's real. That's real. But what stuff. is that? Like, that's such a weird, like, I feel like it's artists have a man. weird relationship with perfection. Yeah. Like, why is that? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you're physically creating something, or at least manipulating something. Like, like I said, I'm a visual creator via the creator. So if my reference is the creator, yeah, my reference is perfection. But what does that even mean? What is like, what like, is perfection? Who fucking knows but like yeah. you see your fingers you see your intestines you see your fucking hair like everything was intentionally placed there for a function and you see like the solar system and all of this shit that is like a product of creation so when you have that as your mental framework for what creation is when you're trying to create in whatever medium you use you're always trying to make it the best you can so like even if it's just editing a fucking picture on VSCO, that might not have even been for anything yeah. major. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was just for like a picture of me, you know, even of art or right. whatever. Like I think it was a picture of you. Exactly. Like, yeah. So the amount of precision that I would use for anything just translates to anything creative. So like you said, it's that search for. But how did you know, like, at what point were you like, all right, cool, we're good? You know what I mean? With like, like process? you're like, all right, I'm good. No, I'm I'm good with the way this picture looks. Hmm. I'm going to post it now. You can almost feel yourself fucking up sometimes. Like you what can do you always, mean? Like, when you do too much, like an abstract painting, like you can always put more yeah. and take shit out and put more. But you can put some shit and you're like, okay, I like how this looks. And the next thing you did fucks up what you had. Then you know, okay, I need to like be more thoughtful before I actually put anything down. And when you feel like satisfaction from where you are, like, you know, you could always do more, but the more doesn't always mean it'll be better. So like when you can feel like, I guess it's just a feeling. feeling, Yeah, exactly. Like you feel like, okay, there's no hole in this piece. Like, cause me, like I punch a fucking lot of holes in my work. Just yeah. to see where it can be better. So when you're looking at it, and it's like, all right, cool. I, I'm actually at peace with this. It's like, but how do you how do you know? Like, cause, cause the whole thing, the whole thing is like, it's it's like a session, right? Or that's mm-hmm. how I think about it. Like mm-hmm. when I make my music, I think of it like I'm sitting down, and especially if it's like something like a new track mm. or something that doesn't exist yet, right? Then it's almost like you got to be in a different space as opposed to when you're working on something that you already started. Right. So like, I don't know, like how long does it take you to make a painting on average? Okay. That's a weird question. Cause, <laughs> cause it fucking varies. Yeah. I'm swearing to fuck load and I apologize, but no, that's cool. It varies. Like the last painting I did, I sent it to the group chat. That one. Yeah. The colorful one. Yeah. That's the wildest experience I've had with a painting because it took three days. And 
probably the size because it's not too How big. big was it's, it? Because I couldn't tell from the photo. It's 14 by 18 inches. Okay. So that's like right there. Yeah. So I knew it was something precise because it was a portrait. So normally that would take me like at least a week to even get to a point where I'm satisfied, you know? But like I told my girl, like I was paint, I painted it at her crib. So I was like, like you said, change of environment. She had just recently moved downtown. We're in an empty space. I was feeling inspired. It was right yeah. at the end of 2018. I was like, okay, I'd been trying to find something. Let me try and had a fresh canvas. I started it that night. I saw where it could be. I didn't finish that night. So I knew I had to take a pause yeah. and come back to it. And then on the third day, I knew I was happy with where it was. I could have added more, but it might have just made it bad. You know, like, it's like a good Kanye West song has a lot of components. But if it's too much, it can be like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, it's too you overwhelming. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, it's that balance you have to always unless be that's of. Unless that's what you're going for. Too much, right? Yeah, if that's, like, the decision the you're intense, making with right? it. Right? Yeah. But it wasn't. So I knew yeah. that I needed to know when to stop. But does the intent happen, like, Before. do you already know what the outcome's going to be? Because I, I feel like I already know the answer to this, but, like, yeah. do you already know what the intention's going to be with the painting? Or are you kind of, like, that happens afterwards? But again, it varies. It grows, right? Yeah, because, like, you can, see, you can see what you want in your mind, but it's never, ever, ever, ever ever going to be the exact same thing yeah of course right? yeah same thing with music and art right and you know what you're going for but you know during the process it might change so you're not trying to hold on too dearly to that so it's a bit of both sometimes i have no direction and i just begin which is rare like for a painting because i mean Supplies ain't cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless it's an abstract painting that you're actually just trying to really freestyle the process. Yeah. But like most times you know where you're headed and you hope you attain close to it. Do you do your own paintings or like do you ha do you do paintings for people? Like do they request stuff for you? Right. To yeah. Because then I feel like that's occasions. more restricting, right? Because they'll be like, oh, I want a, I want a painting of like... Right. Um you know, something specific, and then you got to, like, draw that. I mean, it's definitely more restricting, but sometimes restrictions help the process. Like, if you're... I look at it, like, because I've taken some art courses in uni right now as just electives, and a lot of those pieces have ended up in my exhibitions. Yeah. And I feel like I needed the guideline on what to paint in those regards, like, the self-portraits or like a specific landscape type of thing. So I feel like if it's a commission, yeah, there's still restrictions because they want something, but not all commissions are like, okay, I need this with this and this color and that. Sometimes they know they just want a vibe. And you're like, okay, I want like... Is that better or is that worse? She, what? When someone's just like, I want a vibe. I mean, you is still that, have to define the yeah, vibe right? to like, some degree. Yeah, right? Like you need degree, some direction right? with that. But like... I know, like, Aisha hit me up for this. It's crazy. We were talking about the next exhibition. I shouldn't yeah. give what it's based on. But she wanted me to make a painting based on a verse, J. Cole's verse in Legendary by Joey Badass. So that's direction as to what to paint, but it's still broad enough on the approach. So I feel like it's... It's a guideline, but not a restriction, you know? Yeah. Yo, that's crazy that you brought that up, because I was thinking about this, like, for a while now, where, like, the idea of combining, like, different types of art together, where it's, like, a visual component with a musical right. component, and especially in your case, because you actually do music a little bit, too, right? right. I don't know, like, yeah. how yeah. you would describe it yourself, um, but it's almost like you paint or the painting looks like the music sounds. Right. You know what I mean? Or it could work the other way where like I could look at something and be like, 
this is this is the sound. kind of this is the kind of music that would that go with company. it. Yeah. So I think that would like man, this is like I've been thinking about this for a while where it's it's like I feel like the direction should be or one of something that an artist should consider is trying to incorporate more of the senses in mm -hmm. the experience right. in the consumption experience. Right. So like Texture. Yeah, like like it's gotta it's not it's gotta like not just look good, but it's like it there's gotta good. be something to it. Like an example is when um when you had your listening party, right? right? For that tape that you dropped. And so I mean, first of all, the vibe was dope because you had your paintings there and everything yeah. too, right? So it was like kind of double faceted. Yes. But it's like after a while, you know, people were mingling, everyone's having mm -hmm. a good time, everyone's like dressed up and, right. and all that. <laughs> Black and then, excellence. yeah, <laughs> and then after a while, you, you know, you played your, your tape and then, yeah. and I think listening to it in that environment is different from, well, obviously it is, but like then, you know, listening to it on, like, yeah, headphones. or like just yeah. having, having to play in the background when, you know, you're like cleaning your room up, right. room up or something. Right. Like it's not the same thing, yeah, right? It's a whole different energy. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what makes the music better to an extent mm. is the environment the that you fusion. actually yeah, yeah. That, that you actually listen to it in. definitely it's like li like you said listening parties like i'm a big proponent of listening parties. Yo, i think that's like the real shit. shit like from eastern promises yeah. like even just being around the other people that might have known about the project or the person behind the project changes how you digest the project because you know you're listening communally. It's like fucking Wyoming when Kanye has yeah, all the... Like, yeah, yeah. It's a whole energy and you know these people Can have you been imagine working. if you were there Bro, and heard it? Yo, we finna have our Wyoming real soon. Yeah. But that's by the way. <laughs> but like just knowing that there's people behind the scenes that work on this that are celebrating its release... And you can see what the songs mean to them as well, not just the person right. that made it. Yeah. You know, that that energy translates to the onlookers that have no clue about the process. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh shit, this was like a whole village that produced this. And it's like, it means some shit to these people. Like, they've been bumping this. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> like, if you, if you think about like our ancestors, like right. way back, like that's how they, that's how they did music, right? Yeah. Like, you know, they were in like circles right. around like fire and just like banging right. drums and shit mm -hmm. like that. Like it's, that's, that's how music was consumed. Yeah, communal. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like the tribe is there and you're just kind of like taking in not just the sounds, but mm -hmm. like that, you know, the smells mm -hmm. and like, right. and I think, I think like people or like artists have to consider that more, like right. not just the direct medium, but like kind of like these the others. surrounding. Yeah, like if you think about good food, for example, like good food doesn't just taste good, right? It also smells good and right. looks good. Right. Big right, facts. so it's like, yeah, right, so. And it's probably healthy to some degree. Nah, healthy food doesn't taste good. <laughs> That's a fact, right? Like, <laughs> healthy food does not taste You've good. never tasted good food that was healthy? Like what? <laughs> yeah. Is steak Give me, healthy? Name me three foods that... Mad unhealthy? Steak? Steaks? <laughs> yeah, everything's got cancer. Well, everything is like, exactly like right. so wait, what do we actually eat? Cancer as, tastes as good. <laughs> <laughs> do not repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean like you know what I mean though, right? Yeah, like have like, you ever considered that? Like kind of the idea that Aisha brought up was like, you know, like you look at or you hear something and then you paint yeah, what that looks it's like crazy or what that sounds like. Because, like, the first time I did that was in an art course that I took as an elective. Yeah. And the very first project was to paint a visual translation of an instrumental song. Okay. So I painted Childish Gambino's Urn. I don't know if you know it. Urn. Not yet. It's on be because the internet. It's like a minute and a half. Yeah. It's beautiful, bro. That whole album was dope. Oh, my days. The painting was beautiful or like this? No, the song is beautiful. Okay. The painting was all right. Like, it was cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> But like knowing that that was the direction to go. So I, I was focusing on like the rhythm, the tone, the... The, the colors. The temperature of the song, like yeah. sound of warm. Are you synesthetic? It, what? 
synesthetic. I do not know what that means. That's like, that's what, um, uh, I think Pharrell synesthetic. Like mm. it's when your, your brain is wired in a way where like you, like your senses are kind of like intertangled a little mm. bit. So when you, when you hear something, you see a color. Or when you see a color, like you smell hmm. a smell or I something would, like that. I don't that. know if I'm all the way to that. Definitely not all the it's way like to a, that. It's like an actual like brain thing, hmm. I think. Or I don't know if it's just like woo-woo signs. <laughs> I don't knows? know. I don't know if it's an like, actual medical term, but... It could be something. Like I, I definitely don't only perceive something. Like if it was just... Looking at a color, I'm not only seeing the color, I'm feeling how the color makes me feel. Yeah. But that might be like a result of me actually being a visual creator who yeah. actually gives a fuck about visuals. Yeah. Because I know like trying to explain that or expect that feeling from another viewer wouldn't always be the case. Because like I've created works that I have felt certain ways about it and course you expect at least some people to feel a similar feeling and some people do some people don't and that comes through with how people perceive shit to begin with and it's perception at the end of the day and how people even value art in all forms because like there's people that listen to music and tear the fuck up and it was yeah and it was a song like in an another actual, language like, yeah, you didn't for know sure. what the fuck they said. Like fucking um, Ornello Vanoni, La Putamento. I've, ripped, I've fucking abused that song. <laughs> and I finally searched what it meant. And it was like a dark, it wasn't dark, but it was sad. But yeah. it sounded so beautiful. And I had no clue what it meant, but I felt something just from hearing that. So like, I feel like not everyone is wired or even cares enough about certain fields to attribute other feelings to it like well i think i think that like that's one of the things about art in general is that like it has the ability to transcend language right and like transcend barriers like that mm -hmm. like like that song you don't know what they were saying but mm -hmm. it still you know struck you yeah, in a certain the way sonics, right the emotion yeah. like Everything, like, you can almost, like, I wish I knew Yoruba because a lot of my favorite songs, like, Brimo, Asha, like, they're singing in their, like, native yeah. dialect, and I have no clue what they're saying, but I wish I did because I can feel what they're saying. Yeah. I don't think that's a mistake. Like, Fela would tell you music is a spiritual thing. Like, yeah, for that, sure. Like, that yeah. transaction alone is mad spiritual because, like, I don't see... There's no physical thing making me feel this way. This is just all sensory, like you said. Like, I'm feeling based off whatever this is, you know? When you when you make a painting mm -hmm. or, like, even music... Right. Do you... Because there's two different types of... There's two ways that people consume art, I mm -hmm. think. Like, one... Okay, I'm like, especially with music, I feel like there's... Music that people listen to casually, right. and then there's music that people listen to like attentively, okay. yeah. right? I I personally like the latter, right. but I get why the former is necessary too. Right. Um, but do you feel like that's like a decision you have to make when you you're creating something? Like, okay, am, am I? making something that I want people to actually focus on. Like mm -hmm. when I, when I listen to music, especially if, if someone recommends something to right. me and I'm like, okay, fine, I'll check it out. And if I know ahead of time that like, this is something that'll be good, mm -hmm. like, you know, some, I don't know, just anything. Right. The way, like what I would do ideally, especially with my own music, I mm -hmm. want people to listen to my music. Um, you know, just like I want them to dim the lights and like light a candle and like put some incense <laughs> yeah, on and just kind of like, you know, feel comfortable right. and then just kind of sit down with headphones or whatever and mm -hmm. just like just Vibe zone out, out yeah. to it. Right. Because I don't think I mean, and that's that's the direction I take with it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't make music that you could just like let it play in the background right. when you're like doing chores and stuff like that. Right. 
I feel like it's definitely a subconscious thought when making anything that has to cross the boundaries of art and commerce, you know? But like... Because you don't, you don't want to be like a sellout too, yeah, in a way. But you still want to make what you want to make, you know? Yeah. Like, like you said, you understand the need for the former, which is vibes. Pull the mic up right? closer. Yeah. You understand the yeah. need for like the former, which is straight up vibes and background music or just m- melodical shit yeah you know and there's a there's a space for that and i feel like the best art comes when you find the balance between both where it can cross both like like you said you don't want your shit to be played in the background while doing other shit but i've i've consumed your music both ways concept one and two i've played it in the background because it's it's no words yeah. and it's it allows you to still be in the vibe and do something else right. you know so that's functional ass music right there because i could choose to shut the fuck up and listen to the vibes you're providing as well as continue whatever it is i'm doing while intentionally wanting that still playing you know right so it's like you you wouldn't want to go all the way to pimp a butterfly where you have to have a fucking talking drum to understand the emotion yeah. between. Yeah, behind. some people are saying that it was like too much. Yeah, like it was and like sometimes you have to go all the way that route to send your message because yeah. we respect the album for what it was because it was all the way that it was analog in production and all of that. Yeah. We can feel that super jazzy exactly. Yeah. So like it's it's. Its intention was understood, but its flaw becomes its replay value because we're not trying to hear that shit all the damn time. Love you is complicated. I'm not trying yeah. to hear that all the damn time, but yeah. I feel yeah, I feel yeah, yeah, the yeah. art. There's a in time it. and a place for everything. Exactly, it's yeah. beautiful art, but I'm not finna play that while I'm cleaning. Yeah, but <laughs> there's songs that I play while I'm cleaning and when I'm trying to listen. That's true. Yeah, you know, and I'm sure there's songs you can think of that can cross that bridge on both sides and that's why i feel the best fucking art is made like think of feels like summer by childish gambino that shit was everywhere it sounds amazing but the underlying message is dark as fuck mm. you know like if you're listening f- to listen you get he, his has, message. he has a way of doing that that's, like that's the, that the juxtaposition exactly. of like the happy-go-lucky mm-hmm. melodies and stuff right and then, and then like contrasting with like the dark messages. exactly that that goes back to the last painting i showed you guys it was it was alive vibrant yeah nice colors you look at it but the subject i re- i named it yesterday i called it saint mary right? saint mary yeah are you are you gonna put this up so that people can see it yeah probably like so they at, know what you're at, talking about yeah, at some point by the time this is out probably all right cool yeah, yeah. so um when i, I was looking at it because it's right now in my girl's room. It's just right there. So if you're on the bed, the subject is dead balling you, right? Yeah. And the, you can see like there's some tears in the eyes, but not all the way. So I kind of got the vibe like this was like, uh, I don't know if you know much about the mother of Jesus, but like imagine having given birth to someone that you know has to go through all of this shit, but this is the plan. But you have to just sit back and watch. This nigga get killed and abused mm. and fucking rebuked, knowing that this is the person that's actually meant to do the shit you've been waiting for. And you're just trying to contain yourself because you know it is the plan. So I, I, that was the pain I felt in the piece. But again, it's pink, it's bright, it's ecstatic when you look how do you, at it. How do, you know, how do you know like what colors you want to use to represent feelings like that? You you know what colors give you feelings. Like if I yeah. put green, you're already thinking earth. If I put brown, you're thinking natural. If I put white, you're thinking pure or whatever. If I, you know, like if I put dark, you're thinking, okay, this is a solitary or like yeah. a deep thought. Like so the merger of all of those gives off an intentional emotion if you are intentional about it. Sometimes you just put shit down in it. How do you, but like, 
I think one thing that is like I find a lot of people struggle with is like you got to be you got to have you got to be in tune with those feelings right so you know like you can make those associations like all mm-hmm. right you know I want darker colors for exactly. this and whatnot so there's like you want your feelings represented in the yeah. art but then at the same time like the art has to actually be technically sound exactly. too right exactly so like how do you how do you find that balance where you know you can't just be wild about it you can't just like throw yeah. your feelings onto a right. canvas cuz then it might it might be raw but it you know it's got to still look aesthetic right? right that's that's the balance i've been trying to strike for a minute because like um I'm inspired by a lot of different artists, like the people who are mad technical and the people that throw technicality out the window. Yeah. For the sole purpose of emotion, right? So me knowing that I value... So you're just breaking all the rules, right? Exactly. It's like, oh, these two colors aren't supposed to be together. You know? Like, from a technical standpoint. Exactly. But on a technical standpoint, the, the, the rendering is very lifelike, you know. So that's yeah. that's where I get the technicality from and then distort the other expectations from the color schemes and shit. Like, I, she has fucking gold hair and purple skin, you know. Does it, does it annoy you when, like, you know, kind of going back to that, the idea of, like, listening or looking at something from... A casual context to right. like a focused context, like you know, because you, I saw a funny meme on uh, Instagram where it was like um, twenty twenty percent of it is what people actually notice, but like eighty percent is like all the details that you mm-hmm. put into, or you spend eighty percent of your time w- with all the little details, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah. and like you know that most people are not even gonna let right. like, look at it. Yeah, it's it's mad annoying, but it's something you have to come to terms with because. It's like a personal thing, like yeah, you know, you know what's actually on that thing. Yeah, and you like have there's to like have secret gems on that. Canvas. Exactly. Yeah, and you have to have the faith that someone out there will catch it. Like Lupe has bars, knowing nobody is going to fucking understand what this nigga yeah. said, and he's comfortable with that. Just going over everyone's heads. You know, yeah. and he knows this. People are going to do all it takes to break down what he actually said. So is. It's having the faith that, yo, okay, because you only really appreciate something when you try doing it. Like, I'm sure with you, like with music, especially in engineering, when you're mixing, yeah, you know half the people will notice your effect yeah, on it course. unless they saw the raw version. Right. You know? Yeah. And you have to just confirm within yourself that I'm, I'm satisfied with knowing what I've done. What I've, yeah, exactly. You know? The people that give a fuck will notice how polished it is. And those are the people that have actually dabbled in music to appreciate the music, you know? Right. Because I'm not only making art for art lovers. I'm making art for other artists to consume. So I expect other artists to understand the level of intent that goes behind creating art. So I expect them to give that respect, you know, like... I wouldn't I wouldn't see a building and be like, yo, this architect could have done this better. Like, fuck you mean. Like, did you see what yeah, you went don't know. through for yeah. the foundation and all of that? Like, yeah, they do some weird shit. Like my room, the washroom comes first. Why the fuck does what that do you happen? Mean? Oh, like when you walk in? Yeah. Yeah. Dead ass. Like <laughs> now I think there's a reason for that. I think like when there's a fire and you're like you're taking a dump, you gotta be you gotta make that quick escape. Fair enough. I mean, you gotta, I think there's, I think there's an actual like, no, that's actually the reason why doors swing a certain way. Exactly. I learned that so recently. Right. I was like, like, cause I did TD for technical drawing like back in high school in Nigeria. So like there was like certain things you had to know. Yeah. So like when you've dabbled in something, you get to appreciate what actually goes behind doing something. Like if you try yeah, cooking sure. and you taste the meal that was properly cooked. You'd be like, yo, big up. You you threw it down. For like, sure. That's just that's just how it always is. Like when you when you wanna explore something and then when you start learning a little bit about it, mm-hmm. that's when you know how much you don't know about exactly. it. Exactly. And then you're like, God damn it. Yeah. Like 
Some how we how we doing for time right now? Are we like uh, thirty minutes? Thirty minutes. All right, cool. So should we want to start recording or? We're all good, right? We're still good with the camera. All right. Yeah. Man, that's like, that's my biggest thing right now. Like, for like what I'm struggling with is trying to figure out where, where like at what point is something complete. Like I I read this thing I told Zane about this the other day, but like I read this thing called the eighty percent rule, mm-hmm. and it was written in the const- context of music, but I think it could be applied to any art. Right. And basically, it's like the idea that a a, a song like I'm going to explain it in terms of music, but a right. song is never actually finished. You never finish a song. Right. What you do is you let it go. Right. You know what I mean? And I think like that could be like that's how other arts work right. too, right? You let it go, and the thing is, like, the way that the 80% rule comes into the picture is, let's say there's two producers, mm-hmm. right? And one producer f- tries to finish the track, like, 100%, right? And then the other producer goes, like, 80% and then says, like, all right, you know what, that's enough. I'm just going to release it mm-hmm. at 80%. So Knowing ends- it's at 80? No, I, it's, like, arbitrary. Yeah, okay. just knowing that it's not, like... Finish, but you take a conscious decision to just be like, all right, you know what? I'm not even going to like, because if you, I mean, let's be honest, you could work on something forever, right? right? There's got to be a point where you got to say, all right, that's enough. Yeah. Right. So when you think it's finished, it's already too late. Mm. So the point is you. It's already too late to put out. It's like, it's too late. You did too much to it. Oh. Hmm. Like you thought about it. But so the point with the point with the two producers is. Um, the the one producer that finishes it to completion, right. um, let's say they can only get like three tracks done in a month. The other producer that goes to like 80%, eighty does five tracks a month, right? Because right? they're not actually going all the way with it. Mm-hmm. What happens is, okay, sure, producer like A will have like polished tracks, mm-hmm. but over time, producer B actually finished more, not finished, but like released more, more music, right? Yeah. So what ends up happening is you you get more practice in a way, like you get more um, exposure to the techniques and, mm-hmm. and all of that. And then after a certain point, producer B's 80% is actually better than producer A's 100%. 100%. You know what I mean? So Because of the practice? Because of the practice, the yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's, that's like a practical standpoint. But... Um, from a more like conceptual standpoint, it's like, mm. are, we, are we good with that camera? From a, from a more conceptual standpoint, it's like, how do you even know if something's done, right? Like, right. that's so arbitrary. Yeah, I feel like, um, I'm going to use art again. I feel like there was a uh, Da Vinci painting that, I don't know if it was, probably not the Mona Lisa, but it was one of them that was never completed because he kept working on it till he died. Yeah. Type shit. of shit. Exactly. Yeah, you took it to the grave with him. Like, yeah, <laughs> literally. Damn. So in that sense, you can literally always keep working on everything you own. But when you know you have to put something out to the public domain at some point, you know you have to decide to stop. So the question is, how do you know when it's how finished? How do you know when to stop? Yeah. So like I said, when you feel the sense of peace with the peace, like when you feel like, okay, the there's nothing I desperately need to change. There's something I could change. There'll always be something you can change. But right. if you don't feel the desperate need to change this thing that will make it better, just stop. Shit, that I gotta get on that level. I'm not even for me, I can't even I have to I have to train myself to be like to to fight those urges to yeah. add like an extra tweak because it's a science, especially it is in a your science. Realm. Yeah, at that point, it's not even fun anymore, yeah. right? You're like getting too into the wheat with yeah. it, and like you're just you're just too um, like it's not it's not like creative anymore. Mm-hmm. It's too it gets too like technical. Yeah, because you can all you can literally always add more, always. And it's like yeah, to to an extent, it's like it might not be good enough to you, but it'll be like because you've heard it or you've been working on it for for that long, for that long. Exactly. so you're seeing all these things that you you may not be happy about mm-hmm. but for somebody that just looks at it for for like just right there on right. the spot 
like they're gonna they're gonna get hit with everything at mm-hmm. once, right? So it's like it'll blow their minds, and then you're you're just standing behind them, like, oh man, like yeah, if only you yeah, knew all exa- that. Exactly, you know I mean? if you knew how I felt about the nose or type of thing, but like if you felt so bad about the nose, fix the nose before you put it up. That's where I come from. Like, if there's a specific thing that you feel needs revisiting, revisit that shit until you're at peace with the entire thing. Like, back to the song, like, music. This is my first project, you know? So like, No, it's not. What do you mean? It is you, dead ass. Like, my first musical like official, project. You put like, out, like, singles and stuff. Yeah, but, like... uh. Body of work, body of work. Yeah. yeah, and it's still not complete. That's like side eight, but that's by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, me knowing that I've been listening to music for this long, and I'm very particular with the music I listen to, and I know the people I listen to are very, very, very technically sound. I automatically use them as my yardstick, and I'm In like, reference. yo, exactly. Yeah. Like, what the fuck will Abso do? What would Cole do? What would Kendrick do? Yeah. And I'm listening to my shit. And I'm like, mm, like I don't even love my voice to begin with, you know? So I'm already that way about listening to my shit back. So like that realm is way harder to say this is done. Mm. Like my engineer at school, he hates me because I would keep going like, yo, uh, like, because the, they can always be more changes and shit. That's where the other party comes in to say, no, this is fine. Or a third party to actually balance things right. out, you know? Because you can feel it's <coughs> it's your craft, so no one can really say anything. But. You think, like, that kind of mentality worked in the past a lot more, but now in today's culture... Everyone's more about like like just being like it's more quantity over quality to yeah. an extent where you got to put out 80% mm-hmm. That's more what I was frequent, about frequently when you were saying that yeah. rule too. Whereas like if if we're if we're if we got to wait like 6 months for a dope painting. Right. It's like yeah, it's dope but like we got to wait 6 months for, for it the next as opposed <laughs> to like yo if you're putting out like something every week right for like all 52 weeks of the year it's like yeah. no one could ever not see your name around like you're always like in their mind space yeah. right I guess, so like i guess you have to choose the arena you want to play at like you have to choose whether i'm playing the visibility game or the quality game the or impact if i'm trying game. to balance both like cuz imagine like, let's take it back to music. People that have job projects every year versus people that have job projects every two years. Right. We have evidently said the two-year wait projects have been better than the one-year project. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, you spend like, more time on it. Yeah, but, like, the one-year projects have brought the artists to visibility, which also increases their revenue because clout, yeah. attention all of this other shit comes back in revenue in some way. But like, if you're focused about the content and it being the best it can be, I would, I'd rather do a 90% rule than an 80%. A 90% rule? You know, like, yeah. I'd rather know it's, it's very good and it's the best I can make it. I'm at just, that moment Exactly, though. at yeah. the moment. And I'm not just overstressing versus intentionally putting out something that I know could be better. You know, just to be in their eyes. But it's also like time sensitive too, in the sense that like when I let's say for example, like if I I release something, actually mm-hmm. this happens all the time. I'll re- right. I'll release something right, and literally right after I put it out, like I'm finally satisfied with my mix or whatever, mm-hmm. I'll put it out, and then like a week later I'll learn something like a new tip or something. Mm-hmm. And I'll start using that tip for my mixes going forward. It's like, oh, man, if I literally knew that ahead of time, I would have made that mix a lot better. I mean, that's the beauty of progress, man, because, like, we need to see that. We need to see the growth in your content, too. Like, if you always used everything you learned to go back to the things you were working on, you wouldn't have made the more shit that you were talking about, the more content, and we wouldn't 
the viewers wouldn't be able to appreciate your progress to even yeah no no for sure give you the because it's almost like you need. they have to be like the audience has to be engaged in your story right, right. right like the story of your evolution as well like it's not the art is not just the art like it's mm -hmm. also like who's behind it yeah right and if they if they really um you know if they're for a lot of times like they might not even like the art but they'll like the person right and because of that they'll like you know mm -hmm. support that person yeah going going back to the six month wait for a painting versus weekly outputs if you weekly updated them on your progress on that six month painting you're still being visible you're still opening the public to you if if they if you like document yourself you mean yeah or like, like what do if you mean? every week you posted progress. a progress shot right of that one large painting you've been working on the people are growing with you on that piece so you you just have to compensate for what you're missing out on versus weekly content for weekly updates right cuz i if you have your end goal for the grand piece you know you're not going to compromise it just to be present you know like have you seen that movie there's um i forgot what it was called that you know that movie with um that like robot movie do you know what i'm talking about where um uh, there's this guy it's a one word thing no it's like um it's two words ex machina yeah, yeah 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 that's a dope movie by the yeah. way but there's this one there's this one scene you haven't seen that movie <laughs> you're like ex looking machina? all screwed face <laughs> Ex, ex machina and um no there's one there's this one scene in the movie where it was like um the guy the guy was showing um there's like a painting right mm -hmm. and i forgot i forgot how it goes i think he's pretty much saying that like it was an abstract painting mm -hmm. and he's he's just the premise of that scene was he was just saying he was telling the other guy that if the painter thought about what he was doing mm -hmm. then nothing would get painted like not a single stroke would have right. even like oh okay the painting was like this random it was like super random super abstract yeah and it's like how do you how does an individual create or represent randomness right mm -hmm. like because especially if you're trying to make randomness mm -hmm. it's not really random to right. an extent yeah because you're you're like it's going through your yeah, influences right your body and everything yeah and your own mind like it's mm -hmm. not pure random yeah but basically the what he was saying is like if you think about it you're not going to do anything right, for an for the abstract random painting, yeah right i feel that like, would you ever do, i like i haven't seen like have you dabbled in like yeah I, that's my I, shit i, I love that stuff that. i remember i remember you told me you liked that abstract one i had started love before. that minimal yeah. like right just like like that's what i'm trying to find a balance with because I, I normally didn't dabble in that but i know the effect of abstract art and the release it offers to as a outlet you know because like people people use art as an outlet yeah and i feel like if you're always thinking about what you're going to paint and you have a very detailed breakdown of each step yes the process of physically painting could be a release but like the physical gestural release with experimental processes and abstract work really you can feel the emotion more when it's gesture i don't know There's yeah a, you can, whole, exactly you, you got to put your body into it exactly like yeah so like i feel like he whoever said the quote was right to a degree because we're still thinking about how this color complements the other color yeah right there's still always a consciousness like we're, we don't just black out and then go into no, all so the, the reason the reason why you can't black out and do it is because you actually you have to be trained like you have to put in the hours right, first of all exactly. to be good at it like you actually have to be a student right right learn the techniques learn the strokes mm -hmm. learn how to like balance you know whatever Tones it has to be and, yeah. and then once you once you feel comfortable that like it's almost like a muscle memory oh, yeah. then like you turn your brain off yeah, and point. you let your muscles like yeah. do you know you let 
your body paint. Mm -hmm. And then, because your body has, like, an intelligence that, like, a lot of people say that. There's, like, nerve endings, like, Mm -hmm. in your, like, stomach area, like, as dense as your brain. And that's, like, that's, that's how people say, you know that whole, like, gut feeling thing? Right. They think it's, like, related to that. Wow. Where you, did you know that? Yeah, it's, like... It's crazy, yeah. Like it's because there's a lot of nerve endings like wow, around yeah. your torso area, mm. and um, so there's like an intelligence in your body that mm. like you know is is like different right. from your your mental intelligence, yeah. right? So that's how like when you see when you see like professionals, like, athletes, right? Yeah, elite yeah. like athletes or or like people that actually they're engaged in work that uses their bodies Physical, a lot yeah. like dancers mm-hmm. and like you know just people people that have to use their bodies a lot you there's a big difference between professionals and like amateurs right, right? yeah where you can almost tell when someone's thinking too much mm-hmm. and so the professionals are ones that like man like if you if you watch like um man just like the way certain like the way like Iverson would think of crossovers mm-hmm. that it's like in the moment like you can't think about yeah. doing stuff like yeah. that like doing a certain tween tween second like, nature yeah. to you at that point <laughs> <laughs> tween tween behind the back and then like delay Real. like you can't you can't think about that ahead of time yeah. that's like cause everything's happening so quickly mm-hmm. right so like your brain is not pro- like you can't right. think about it like that your brain's not processing at that at that time so you almost have to like the the time it takes for you to see something and then for it to go to your brain process, think about it uh, and then yeah. do the motion React. with you. like the way hockey goalies work mm. you don't have time to do that you don't have Real time to, like, re- it's got to go directly yeah. from the vision to like the save right right so that's like, muscle mem- memory right? right it's like war too like if you're if you're actually in a oh, fucking war you're not finna oh you gotta of- shut your brain off for sure for that <laughs> you can't you can't be that's you can't even be yourself when you're it's, like exactly, fighting like auto that. drive like you gotta be dead already before you're dead that's deep <laughs> that's deep <laughs> um let's let's wrap this up let's um well let's wrap up on a, a better note yeah that one. where where could people um you know see your paintings and like see your right uh like your art Everything pull, that you talked about, what it like? Pull up on a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have a website. I mean, you have an actual website. Yeah, I update that kind of frequently. Okay, we'll put we'll put the links. Yeah. On uh, Down, wherever links go. Thegunnavision.com. Thegunnavision.com. Yeah. You designed it yourself. Yeah. I mean, Squarespace. But yeah, like, yeah. But I you like it laid it out. I think that's like an artist thing too. You kind of do it. Want to do it all yeah. on your own? Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Because like you have a vision. No pun intended, and like you know how you want shit to end out, and that's kind of how I dabbled in more mediums or media, because I like digital want, versus yeah, because like, I yeah. needed to achieve something, so I did it by myself. So I had to learn how to yeah. make graphics. I used to use PowerPoint to make like song covers for people back home, and then just the necessity or like taking pictures, like zone district, like. Having to take pictures came from having to release photo shoots for the brand, you know? Mm. So, like, you just... You just got to put yourself out there. Exactly, yeah. And then be in that environment. Period. Like, What's, um... You're, you're coming up with the next exhibition soon, or, like, is that still, yeah, like, on the low? That's, that's still a hush thing for that's now. That's a hush yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, 2019 fine. is to do the groundwork. It's a big year for you? Hopefully. A lot of plans. All right, man. Hopefully. We're looking forward to that. Done already, good. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, let's just wrap it up there. It's Done been a pleasure, man. Shout out for bringing me to Keith's hey, corner. That's know. what's up. I'll have you back. I'll have you back later. Hey, dope. We'll have we'll it's have the multiple pilot, episodes. You know, we fly as hell. Um, All right, we, cool, man. Any last messages for the viewers? Uh, you are a creator as well because you were created by the creator. I think that's your innate ability to create. Almost a responsibility, would you say? Both. I mean, because procreation is also creating, right, right. which is the responsibility. But I think like, it's a shame if you don't, like, I know it's so cliche, to, like, you know how you, people say you only have one life and all yeah. that. 
I think it, it's like a huge shame if you don't use what you have. Right. And like, a lot of people don't know what they have. That's why. Right. Yeah. I, I saw this tweet. Someone was like, "Why didn't my mom force me to go to these um, painting clubs or like?" music sessions and shit like to give me a hobby like nigga no one assigns you a hobby mm. like <laughs> you go out and look for what the fuck you like in the world yeah. and you find what works for you but I understand that cause people give sh options handed to them like they get options handed to them and they can choose where they want to everything everything happens for a reason right like even if you go through hard times right and like man there's so many there's so many stories of people like great artists mm -hmm. that have come from horrible Nothing, yeah. like beginnings you know what i mean right. like yeah i mean that's kind of innate in expressing like you have to have some you gotta have a grind like a know? grit like, at that yeah. point all right cool man hey well i'll probably play some like music in the background and like some, fade out a little bit lighting. and then get some music coming in but all right cool we'll just wrap it up right there I've been waiting to take a piss. <laughs>